welcome to the Kid Men Podcast with Dr. Val and Dr. Virginia, where we talk about everything Kid Men. And pull back the curtain on some of the surprises and challenges in children's ministry that nobody prepares you for. I'm Dr. Val, and together we have over 45 years of experience in children's ministry. I'm Dr. Virginia. Valerie and I met over 10 years ago in our doctoral program at Southeastern Baptist Theological Seminary. We are excited to share with you all the great stuff that we have picked up over the years. We want to minister to you, the children's minister. Hello, and welcome to the Kid Men Podcast. How are you today, Dr. Val? I am hanging in there. How are you today, (laughs) Dr. Virginia? I am doing good. We're going to talk about something that I think is a perennial topic with um, anyone who works in ministry, but especially preschool and children's ministry, which is volunteer recruitment. Um, Yeah, and it's something that that is... time of year. (laughs) <laughs> yes, yes. School year is getting ready to gear back up. Everyone's yep. sort of like changing gears from summer to the fall. So it is. Our granddaughters actually, to, on the day that we were recording this, our granddaughters oh, actually started school today. Wow. Yeah. yeah. No, and crazy. this is like early August. This isn't is, like, yeah, they, yeah. they kick in pretty Yeah. Fast. Yeah. Oh, goodness. Well, and this is um, especially relevant to me. I just wanted to share, and Valerie and I kind of talked about this a little already. Personally, um, I have taken a new position as a part-time director of preschool ministries. So I'm getting back in the game. Um, Excited, excited. Had a a very good season um, of just kind of staying home with my kids, um, but really excited about about getting back into ministry. Um, And so definitely volunteer recruitment is absolutely on my mind right now. (laughs) I'm so excited for you. And I'm so excited for that church. They have been blessed with a wonderful preschool minister. So oh, I'm excited thanks. for you and for them <laughs> and all the joys that come with jumping yeah, right in at recruitment yes. time. Yes. Yes. Which, and we'll just jump right in. Um, yeah. You know, one of the first things, so a lot of these discussions are happening right now amongst children's ministers. And right. one of the things that I always tell or, or always share or encourage is to always be recruiting. Always. Always. You know, because I, I would say that I have found myself um, cause most recently I've, I've been in churches in the 400 attendance on Sunday to 600 attendance on, on Sunday mornings, kind of, mm-hmm. kind of size church. Right. And I mean, I would say in an average month, I would recruit probably half a dozen new volunteers right. just because preschool and children's ministry has the greatest turnover of right. any ministry. It um, does. you know, just from anything from, you know, Miss Millicent's been serving in the preschool for 60 years and it's time oh. for her to, to step down to, oh, I recruited these people two months ago and they decided this isn't their thing. <laughs> and right. that's okay. Right. And that's it's okay. All right. it's all and good. it's okay. Um, but especially for those once a month rotating volunteers, I mean, right. I would recruit anywhere from three up to eight, 10, 12 people a month right. um, for those. And so recruiting wasn't, isn't just seasonal. It is all the time. You have to have that mindset. You you Mm -hmm. have to just go into it knowing that you are going to be constantly recruiting people, that you're going to constantly be needing new volunteers and new helpers and and new people. And so it becomes a year round activity. It's definitely, definitely not seasonal. And I will tell you, you're talking about the size of the church. I've worked with a lot of churches in recruiting over the years and it honestly doesn't matter if it's a 5,000 member church or a 100 member church, mm-hmm. because you have to realize those large churches, they are trying to recruit four or 500 volunteers for yeah. the year. That is just as difficult in a large church as it is mm-hmm. to find 40 volunteers in a small church. So yeah. it really doesn't matter your size. Recruitment is always going to be always. a challenge. It's always going to be something that you have to be thinking about year round. Mm-hmm. And part of it too is um, one of the things that I think can be very useful is to recruit new people as new people join your church, um, mm-hmm. as new people become a part of your congregation. Um, you know, even if it's in the middle of the year, and mm-hmm. even if you don't think you need anybody, having those conversations mm-hmm. kind of strike while the iron's hot. Right. Um, a lot of times, it's it's exciting to join a new church. You're excited mm-hmm. to be there. You're getting to know people. You're learning about everything. And those are great times to have those conversations with people about well, where have you served before? What are your gifts? Where do you enjoy serving? And so, you know, right. 
when people are new members, just having those conversations and, right. and having a couple things in the back of your mind, be like, oh, so you love music. Great. We've got a children's choir. Let me tell you a little bit more about that. Right. And so, you know, getting those new members um, when they're fresh and striking while that iron's hot for sure. Right. right. There is more finesse to recruitment than we think that there might be. Because I will tell you, if you are constantly asking people to do things for you, if you're constantly asking people to fill in or to jump in or to do things just all the time, mm -hmm. then there is a little bit of exhaustion that comes from that. I had a friend one time at the church, I hadn't seen her in a little while. And so I texted her, oh, you need to come by the children's ministry and say hello, you know, some morning because I haven't seen you in a long time. And she said, no. I'm afraid if I come by, you're going to ask me to do something. Oh. <laughs> and I told her, I said, oh, I hope I am not that children's minister. Like I have really worked hard yes. in my whole entire ministry to not be that person that people ran yes. away from when they saw me coming because they were afraid I was going to ask them to do something in children's ministry. Yes. And you yes. Know, it hurt my feelings a little bit yeah. because I was like, oh, I am so not, I have never, ever asked you to do anything. I don't know why. <laughs> But there was an automatic guilt that came from seeing me like, oh, I've never volunteered in children's ministry. I don't want to see her because I've never done, you know, and I never wanted that to be, you know, the, the thing for people to look yes. at me and say, oh, no, I don't want to see her coming. Mm -hmm. And so when we're saying always being mm -hmm. always be recruiting, we don't mm -hmm. mean that you're constantly badgering people to do things for you. Mm -hmm. What we mean is that you're constantly on the lookout for those conversations where people might be looking for something to do that meets their set of skills where yes. you're building relationships with people and you're getting to know them. And so mm -hmm. that you have this relationship going with them so that you have the opportunity to offer them places to serve yes. Not where you're asking them to do something outside of their comfort zone, right. but where you're offering them opportunities to use their gifts in the children's ministry and just phrasing it that way. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, telling people, you know, I want to find a way where you can use your gifting more in our ministry. That is completely different than saying, oh, I need you to be a body in this classroom. Well, and that's and that's also a good because um, anytime I recruit, I always recruit through one on one conversations, mm -hmm. um, especially if it's if it's a big ask, like right. teaching a Sunday school class, leading a group in Awana, whatever. Right. I always sit down and have those one-on-one -on -one conversations. And I go into that conversation with three or four different things in mind um, mm -hmm. that I think this person might be interested in. Because you're right. It's not just getting a body in a spot. Right. It's getting to know this individual, learning about their interests, their preferences, their skills. What have they done before that they liked? What have they done before that they didn't like? Right. And fitting them into a good match of an area of service. And so right. sometimes those conversations aren't going to yield you a volunteer. And that's right. okay. Right. Right. They can come away from it and saying, you know what, I just, I really don't want to do any of that. I want to organize right. the flower closet and that's all I want right. to do. And that's good. <laughs> and that's and okay. Hey, you need to know that. On your list yes. To do. yes. Yes. You need yeah. to know that because you're right. Because whenever we talk about always being recruiting, it's very intentional. It's very strategic. And it's mm -hmm. with the idea in mind of getting people to serve in areas that are a good fit for them. Right. Because if they love what they're doing, if they're passionate about what they're doing, if they feel like they're using their skills and their gifts, you're going to retain them right. a lot longer. Right. Um, well, and isn't that really what we're trying to do? And, yeah. and I know it can become so overwhelming because we so just need those two leaders in a classroom in our minds, because we just are, we, you know, we, we have to worry about safety and security. We have to worry about, you know, numbers, we have to worry about all of those things. And it's so easy to become so overwhelmed with, I just need people. I just need mm -hmm. people in a room. I just need, you know, and, and what happens is mm -hmm. then you are going to maybe find people, but right. they're going to be temporary people. They, yes. they are only yes. going to be there for your emergency. They're only going to be there. And again, they are going to yeah. become those people that run away from you when they see you coming <laughs> because you are <laughs> constantly just trying to pull them in. And so it's coming through and thinking about how we can use people's gifts to be able to minister to the children that are in mm -hmm. our church. And that's ultimately how we're to look at it. And I think if we pray 
about it towards that way. And we come across to people Mm. as we're having those conversations that we are looking for a fit here. Yes. Yes. You have a gift that you don't even Mm -hmm. maybe realize that you have because people are going to you know, say, well, I don't know how to work with kids, but you have a gift that you don't even realize you have. And this Mm -hmm. is, you know, the gift and this is how you can use it. And it becomes just a different way of looking at recruitment. It becomes a different way of looking at how you find people to be a part of your ministry. Mm-hmm. And one of the things um, that was advice that was given to me that I think is excellent is, you know, I do tend to cast a pretty wide net when it comes to like, say like serving once a month, like obviously mm-hmm. those people are background checked, they're trained, they're everything. Um, and then looking at those once a month people, and I actually mm-hmm. ju- just did this recently on like my first Sunday, you know, I walk into a, a classroom during the mm-hmm. worship hour where once a month mm-hmm. volunteers are serving three-year-olds running smooth as silk. Mm-hmm. Everyone's sitting down, they're doing what they need to be doing. There's no mm-hmm. chaos at all. And I'm like, these people mm-hmm. are amazing. <laughs> and so I got them in my office and, and just said, man, you guys did a wonderful job on Sunday, would you be interested? We've got this need to teach Sunday school classes. Right. You know, would you be interested in in teaching weekly in a Sunday school class? Mm-hmm. And this was just the Holy Spirit and the Lord at work. They just hopped right mm-hmm. on it. They're like, oh, we'd we love to. to. We've we taught kids to. in the past. We'd love to. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> Sometimes it just takes the question. Yeah. Yeah. And, and giving people an opportunity to commit right. to something small, let them try it out, right. let you observe them and see their skill set. Right. And then you'll see people sort of bubbling to the top who, right. who you think, hmm. They, they would be great Sunday school teachers, right. you know, and it may not be a need that you have immediately. Maybe right. like, well, our Sunday school is full right now. We're doing good. But, right. you know, next year, I'm keeping them in mind for next year. Oh, yeah. So, oh, yeah. You know, that's great for we, we talked about during the VBS episode, finding mm-hmm. those people like that would serve during VBS. And you go, yes. oh, wow, you know what? They would be really great during yeah. the year. Yeah. And nobody had ever asked them before, mm-hmm. because I will tell you, you can say what you need from the stage in the worship center a hundred times. Yes. And there will still be people that said, Oh, I didn't know you needed help. <laughs> you know, because they had never been personally right. asked. Yeah. If they if people don't know you, mm. you can't have a relationship with them. And if you don't have a relationship with them, it's really hard to ask them to do something, especially if it's out of their comfort zone or something they've never done before. Yes. And so many times I will have preschool and children's ministers that really don't have the opportunity to get to know the members of their church. And that can really affect how well you're going to be able to recruit. Yes. Having the time to go visit the Sunday school rooms, you know, asking Mm -hmm. the adult classes, may I come one Sunday morning and introduce myself and ask you to pray for a specific Mm -hmm. group of kids. That's Mm -hmm. all I'm doing. I'm coming in to introduce myself. Hi, I'm Valerie. I am the children's minister. Mm -hmm. I have a first grade Bible study (laughs) class that meets at Mm -hmm. 915. And I'm just wondering if I gave your class a group of the first names of those kids, would you pray every Sunday for the leaders in that classroom and for those children in that Mm -hmm. classroom? That's all I'm asking you to do. I'm not asking you to volunteer. I'm not asking you to come help. Mm -hmm. But it has been amazing over the years the number of volunteers that I have received from those classrooms, because yes. once they start praying for the children's ministry, God gets a hold then of them. God puts it in their hearts mm. and they say, well, you know what? Can we adopt that Sunday school group? Can we adopt that Bible study class? Can we, you know, buy them Bibles or can we, you know, buy them a game, you know, or, or a, a supplies or, and then it becomes, you know, could we be the volunteer substitutes for that class? Like if you need somebody yes. in the last minute, you could come to our room and get us and we would come. So I could do background oh. checks and have them ready for that. Mm-hmm. It, it becomes to evolve because then you've got the Holy Spirit working in these people to mm-hmm. really be thinking about mm-hmm. your kids and thinking about your ministry and getting yes. them involved in unique ways that God thinks of that we would would never think of yes. because I've taken that time to get to know yes. those Sunday school classes, mm. to be in the sanctuary and worship yes. with people. Yes. 
to make those little announcements yes. from the pulpit on a Sunday morning mm-hmm. where you might just be talking about, oh, we have a barbecue coming up next Saturday. Mm-hmm. If the children's minister or the preschool minister can just mm-hmm. rotate on to the stage on mm-hmm. a Sunday morning occasionally mm-hmm. to make an announcement, to mm-hmm. lead a prayer mm-hmm. so that they yes. are the face of You're the children's visible. minister. You're, you yes. can, they can see you and they get to know you so that when mm-hmm. you see them in the hall, they know who you are. Um, we were talking earlier and I was telling Virginia a story that I remembered. I was at a new church, <laughs> had only been there for a few months, and I was at a Wednesday evening dinner and sitting at a table of people that I was just meeting. And I said something to, to people about that I volunteered in the preschool ministry. And the people at the table were like, well, and, and I said, I volunteer for, and I said the name of the preschool minister. Like I said, Virginia, like, for example, <laughs> I said, I volunteer for Virginia. I serve in the preschool ministry. And everybody around the table looked at me and said, I'm sorry, who? <laughs> and these were people who had been members of the church for years and years and years. I mean, they had invited us to sit at the table because they didn't know us kind of thing, oh. you know, that kind of thing. And I said, well, I'm volunteering in your preschool ministry for, you know, for, for Virginia. And they had no idea they, 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 and, and honestly, that, that preschool minister had been serving at that church for years, years Mm. before we ever even started attending Mm -hmm. that preschool minister had been there. And so it just kind of shows that because that preschool minister constantly stayed in the preschool wing, she only knew preschool Mm -hmm. parents and the preschoolers, which is great for you to know your people. Yeah. But the problem is she really didn't know the congregation. She didn't know the members of the church. So Mm -hmm. she couldn't actively recruit volunteers outside of the group that she worked with or people that would come and volunteer on their own Mm -hmm. because she had never, she never interacted with them and Mm -hmm. she didn't see them. And so it's incredibly important Mm -hmm. that preschool and children's ministers are seen Mm -hmm. by the congregation, that they go during dinner times and they Mm -hmm. go during service times and they go visit Sunday school classrooms. And that does mean that you're going to have to have people that you've trained that are in place to be in your ministry, working with the kids, working with the leaders Mm -hmm. while you are away. Mm -hmm. But it's vitally important for your ministry, for you to be able to do that. Absolutely. And one of the things that we were talking about, I've been very, very fortunate in that I have had um, senior leadership that has encouraged um, and, and really even expected um, me to be in the service a couple times yes. a month. Right. And so I know not everyone has that. Not everyone has um, a right. senior pastor who's, who, you know, is understanding of, of like the children's minister right. being present in the service. But, right. you know, one, it's good for our spiritual health. If anyone else oh, always it's, it's necessary. misses the worship service, we're going to say, hey, come on, let's get back into worship. Right. Um, so it is, it's, it's, good and necessary for your spiritual health. But then too, just having that opportunity to sit and kind of look around and I strategically sit on the side right. to where I can kind of see, I can kind of look right. out over the congregation. Right. <laughs> and so just having that opportunity to just sit and just look around and just right. see, see new families on Sunday as they're joining, see, mm-hmm. uh, you know, who's there and who isn't there. And so, right. So that um, just being present, even just as an attendee in in the worship right. service, um, right. is very very helpful. Right. So, and I understand. I understand yeah. why sometimes pastors feel the need for their children's minister, their preschool minister, to always mm-hmm. be in their ministry, or why children's ministers or preschool ministers might not ever want to leave their kids or <laughs> their teachers because that is their area and that's where they feel mm-hmm. their strength is and that's where they want to be. But you do have to remember that you have a higher responsibility when you are the leader of a ministry in that you are ministering to the entire church in a unique way. And so you want to be able to have these relationships so that you can have the opportunity to not only get to know parents that maybe won't bring their kids into the preschool or children's area. Mm -hmm. And the only way you're going to see them is if you're in the worship service. 
yeah. or to get to know people so that they can get to know you so that you can find ways for them to be able to serve the children in your church. And again, that might not necessarily be in a classroom. It might be that their gifting is painting. And so they're going to help with sets for VBS, mm -hmm. or it might be that their gifting is to greet people at the door and they can be your hall directors and not necessarily mm -hmm. be with children. You, I'm sure, have a lot of volunteer opportunities outside of mm -hmm. teaching in a children's yes. classroom. And that kind of goes yeah. back to, you know, your strategic, um, you know, volunteer recruitment and, you know, watching people, yes, who will be great teachers, but also watching mm -hmm. for people who will be great leaders. Right. Because there will be a lot of people in your church who say, kids aren't my thing, but maybe mm -hmm. they have an amazing administrative skill set. Particularly right. if you if you know what they do vocationally, sometimes right. you can kind of get an idea be like, oh, that person, yeah. <laughs> I know they've got an administrative skill set right. and they may right. never want to be in a classroom and that is fine, right. but they can be my worship hour director. They right. can be my Sunday school director. They can be the person that um, does some of those administrative tasks that sometimes as children's ministers, we feel like it's harder for us to, to let go of, or mm -hmm. we feel maybe more responsible for like making sure all the roles get done and all the snacks get mm -hmm. passed out and, you know, all the new visitor forms are collected and the mm -hmm. things happen with them. And so, mm -hmm. but finding those leaders those administratively minded people and mm -hmm. putting them into those positions. That way you do have the freedom to visit right. Sunday school classes strategically. You right. do have the freedom to go into the worship service because you know that there are leaders who you've equipped and trained and put into place right. to take care of the ministry while you are, you know, like you said, being the face mm -hmm. of the ministry to the congregation as a whole, getting right. to know new people, reaching out. And so... So obviously, you know, the majority of your time is going to be spent in your department, <laughs> right? but you do need to have those leaders in place to where you can step out and it's okay. Right. Right. And so yeah. you have that ability. Well, we were talking earlier about always be recruiting and it is having those <laughs> positions in mind so that no matter where you are, I've always enjoyed, uh, there's a, a children's minister by the name of Jim Weidman that's written a lot of books on children's ministry. And one of my favorite ones that he ever wrote was called Volunteers That Stick. And I would love listening to his stories of how, mm -hmm. like, for example, he could be at Costco, going through the <laughs> checkout line at Costco, <laughs> and he would be talking to the person and he would be asking them, you know, and, and, and someone would say, oh, wait you know, we've, we've been a member now at your church for about a year. We see you on stage sometimes and, uh, you know, introduce it. Oh, and he would say, great. You know, where are you plugged in? Like, like, you, <laughs> where are you, you serving? Been, yeah, yeah. Where are you serving? <laughs> and they would, and, and he said, you know, inevitably somebody would say, well, we're not really right now. And he was like, well, where would you like to be? You know, and he would start these conversations of, yes. you know, what gift do you think God's given you? He's given us all gifts to be able to serve. And so it's constantly kind of having that in the back of your mind of wanting to get to know people and get to know where they are and, and what they love to do and what gifting God has given them. So it is that constant, that constant. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, and one of the things that I always try to do is um, I try to be very intentional, sort of keep an eye out for even guest families who have been coming, you know, for mm -hmm. a few weeks, even if they haven't joined yet, just to kind of be aware of like, okay, you know, the Smiths, this is of the past six weeks, they've come five of them. Mm -hmm. You know, this is a family who, you know, I just want to have a little conversation with, maybe right. go to their home, bring a coloring book for their child and just talk mm -hmm. with them, mm -hmm. talk with them about membership, about are you new to the area, you know, where have you served before? Mm -hmm. um, and just having those conversations and even laying that groundwork um, even before people are members. So even if you're not right. going to necessarily recruit them right this second to be a Sunday school teacher, just right. beginning those conversations and beginning those relationships and just being intentional right. to watch out for people that you can engage. Right. Um, and not every church has this, but another great opportunity for that is like the new member classes. And so right. once a quarter, um, we'll have um, a class for either new members or people who are considering joining the church. It's, you know, an opportunity. It's like a lunch and just like a short one hour thing just to learn more about the church. But mm -hmm. at those particular events, mm -hmm. um, we always hand out a half sheet with information about all the different places you can volunteer. Right. And so everyone puts their name at the top and you don't have to check anything, right. but that's your opportunity to 
tick, 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 you know, right. anything you might be interested in. Right. Right. And so those have produced a lot of really great follow-up conversations as well. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, handing a half sheet of paper, you know, at these right. new member meetings and saying oh, like, yeah. what are you interested in? You know, you're not right. signing up, you're not committing to anything right now, but right. you know, what, yeah. what sounds interesting yeah. to you? Well, and those are really important to, to be a part of. And again, it's one of those things that I can count on. I don't even, I'm trying to remember right now if I've ever done a new member class where the preschool and children's direct, you know, ministers ever actually attended. And I'm not thinking oh. of very many because like I said, you know, we, we typically are with the kids. We're doing those kinds of things. And I totally understand that, but it's just vitally important yes. because I'm telling you, if you don't, you know, find those leaders that are looking for some place to be. There are other ministries that will find them. And so mm -hmm. you really want to make sure that your pastor understands. It's not that you're trying to shirk your responsibilities. You, you, it's really a necessity for you to be at those kinds of events and to be able yes. to be seen and to get to be known because yes. that is how you're going to recruit. It's going to be through re relationships. It's going to be through people that you meet and have conversations with. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, is that anytime I have these one-on-one -on -one conversations with recruiting mm -hmm. volunteers, I always try to make my expectations very, very clear. Yes. Um, and, you know, like I talk about anytime I recruit Sunday school teachers, I say we ask you to serve for a one-year term. Because mm -hmm. uh, a lot of times people get scared about getting trapped back yes. in the children's department and we're not going right. to try to keep you forever. If you want to teach mm -hmm. more than one year, wonderful. But we do ask right. you to commit to a year. Right. I always ask people to be present 80% of the time. Right. Um, I understand you're going to get sick. You're going to go on vacation. Stuff happens. Right. We get it. Right. Um, you know, I give them whatever the procedure is for subs, whether they find them or we find them or they mm -hmm. we've got a, you know, Sunday school director who finds them. Um, right. Talk about arrival times, um, the material that's used. And so that also helps people feel more comfortable committing because they know right. exactly what they're committing to. Exactly. And they have the benchmark for success. They say, OK, if we're here 80 percent of the time, we're here on time you know, we teach for a year, then like we have been successful Sunday school right. teachers. And right. so, so people want to, people want to do well. And so, right. and they want to know what's expected of them. So the better right. that we can clarify those things, um, mm -hmm. the more comfortable people are committing. Right. You don't want to sugarcoat things that mm -hmm. are the realistic expectations of children's mm -hmm. ministry, because there are a lot of expectations that are necessary. Yes. The safety and security policies yes. that we have, yes. the things that have to be put in place, mm -hmm. those are, are non-negotiable. And if mm -hmm. you kind of start off with saying, oh, this is no big deal. Mm -hmm. You can do this and it's okay. Um, if sure. you sugarcoat the situation to begin with, because you're trying to recruit, you're trying to bring people in, it's not going to take them very long before they realize, oh, wait, this is not what she said. There are not materials in here for us every mm -hmm. Sunday morning. There are not, mm -hmm. you know, lessons yeah. that have been sent to us on you know, Monday for the next week to be able to study ahead of time. All of these things that you kind of promised are not here. And so you're going to end up losing people. So you do right. want to have very clear expectations. Yes. You want to make sure you follow through on things that you have promised. If you promise there's going to be a helper with them every week, mm -hmm. then there needs to be a helper with them every week or something like that. Right. You know, whatever it is that you've, you've, you know, if you're mm -hmm. going to make those promises, you want to follow through because that's how you keep people mm -hmm. participating in your ministry when they know that everything that you've said is true. And, and there's always going to be expectations and emergencies, but they can understand that it's, right. it's when you just come right out and like have told them other things and that's just not going to, it's not going right. to. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. And then I think we probably have our most controversial one. Ah, I didn't know if we were. I, I think you're, you're wasn't like, you're like trying to decide not to. I know. I know. I but think you know we what? need to. Okay. I think it's a, Let's I go think for it's, it. I, yeah. Let's go I know. for it. It's well, one, we might it, as well jump in. And I'll just say, okay, so this this one apparently, I, I didn't realize that this was very controversial, yes. but apparently yes, it, it is. is. And it has been for years. This is not a new yeah. controversy. It's constant. Yeah. And so it's whether or not you like ask and expect parents to serve in your like preschool and children's ministries. Right. Um, so I've always sort of been in, in the context where, um, you know, I wouldn't say like there's like a requirement in the sense that we're going to turn anyone away, but like, there's right. always this sort of expectation that like, okay, like, you know, if you're, you know, a parent and a family who's a part of this ministry, you know, mm -hmm. at least once a month on the once a month rotation, you know, you're going to right. be giving like back into the ministry. Right. Um, and so I was just very, I was very surprised to find out that was right. 
controversial because I mm -hmm. feel like it, in the conversations I've always had with families, be like, hey, you know, we are so glad that you and your children are here. You know, we do ask our families to serve once a month in the nursery, da, da, da. Like a lot, they understand. Right. I don't know, 99% of the time, it just always seems like they sort of understand and they're on right. board with it and they under, right. you know, so it's like if I, you know, want my children to have a place to go during the worship service, someone's got to be in the room. And so right. I'll be right. that someone once a month. <laughs> so, there yeah, are yeah. so many different policies on this. Mm -hmm. There are churches that do not want parents to have to participate in children's ministry at all. There are some who require it, literally require it in that mm -hmm. your children cannot be a part of this ministry if you do not volunteer. Mm -hmm. There are some churches that ask for once a month. There's some who mm -hmm. ask for once a quarter. There are some churches mm -hmm. who require you to serve as many times as you have the number of children. Which you have at some ministry. point that math like yeah stops that math working. does not work yeah because i served in a lot of churches where families have you know six or seven kids and so then you're talking about pretty much they're working every week in the children's ministry yeah. or preschool ministry and so there's a lot of different schools of thought about it mm -hmm. and so you have to do what works best for your ministry obviously but again it's another place where you do need to have that policy set mm -hmm. so that you know what you are going to be doing and so that you can make that across the board, the policy yeah. for everyone and not just certain members or certain others right. or people that, because that's for me, I, that that's something that I have never used as a policy. I have always asked parents to volunteer. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I've had parents that have agreed. And there has been very, very few occasions where I've had parents that have just said to me, you know what? It is not my gifting. It is not where I want to serve. I, I, I prefer to serve with adults or with a different age right. of kids. And so right. it's just really not where I'm going to be. And so it's always been something that I've worked really hard to try to make sure that the parents are serving where they've been called. Mm -hmm. Because the one thing that I have found is that if you have miserable volunteers, yeah. Yeah. You're going to have miserable children. Right. So you don't want in that. In turn, you are going to be a miserable children's <laughs> minister because you are going to constantly be fighting with this mm -hmm. family. They're going to constantly be, you know, not showing up on their Sundays that they're supposed to serve and not telling you because they don't want to get into the discussion or those kinds of yeah. things. So you have to kind of decide, you right. know, if where your, your thought is on this. Mm -hmm. But I do agree with you. The majority of parents understand mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm you need volunteers and that if their children are going to be in the ministry for them to serve one time a month or one time a quarter mm -hmm. is not a huge sacrifice to be able to have their children in a strong ministry right. with loving and caring leaders that are really right. going to be taking care of them during the service. Right. Right. And also when you explain to parents that, you know, if we don't have enough volunteers <laughs> then this room may not be open on Sunday morning <laughs> because I may not have enough volunteers to open this classroom on Sunday morning. Uh, you know, when you have those kind of things, a lot of times parents will go, oh, well, then, yes, I'll be glad to help out once a month. Yeah. But yeah. So I think that's, um, I don't know, I feel like we've shared a lot of different ideas and concepts yeah. and sort of a broad overview of volunteer recruitment, because it's not just one time of year and it's not just one yeah. strategy. It's sort right. of this multi-pronged approach mm -hmm. um, to get to know people, to get to know their strengths and their weaknesses and their mm -hmm. giftings and putting people in positions that are a good fit for them that right. serve the ministry well and where they're going to be happy and you're going to be happy, right. just like what we're talking about. Oh, and yeah. so, Oh, hey, one of my favorite things that we used to do, especially as you were going into the fall, is that we would do like a volunteer fair mm -hmm. where we would have all the different ministries in the church sort of set up booths in the, the you know, walkway as you were coming into church or in your fellowship hall or wherever we would have it located, where we would have people at booths with the different ministries and mm -hmm. a list of different opportunities and how to serve so that the members could come around and kind of see what you do and talk <laughs> yeah. to you about it or have a night where you have them come in and they can rotate to different places and you can share things. And so it's let a lot of it is letting people know, mm -hmm. but letting people know in unique ways that aren't just standing up in front of them on yes. a Sunday morning and say, yes. I need help because yes. that is so usually not going to work. Right. And, and so it's finding those unique ways of letting people know, Hey, mm -hmm. we need some volunteers. And these are the specific things that we really could use help with. 
And the other side of sort of those pulpit all calls that we don't always think about is that Mm -hmm. if a guest is visiting your church and there's this desperate pulpit all call, please give us, please come serve in our nursery. Right. If I'm sitting there as a guest, I'm thinking, oh, so they don't have, is this nursery safe? Like they don't have enough people who's with my child, who's taking care of my, you know? Right. So the the flip side that people don't always think about with with pulpit all calls is that um sometimes we unintentionally communicate things that we that we really don't want to communicate messages right. that we don't want to communicate of either desperation or right. weak ministries that don't have enough people to to take care of our kids right. and right. so so it's that balance yeah. that balance yeah. of of letting people know and it it is mm-hmm. it's really interesting and presenting it, it in a in a positive way. Right, yes. Right, yes. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, know that we are thinking about you. We are <laughs> praying for children's ministers during this yes. time of year, because I know what it's like. I've been there. And so I think about you all often in the struggle of finding the right fit for the right people so that we can share the good news of Christ with our kids. And that's our, our goal. And that's our heart. And so finding people who are going to love on our kids and take care of them and teach them is a huge, a huge thing for this time of year. So we are thinking about you as you're doing that. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us today. And Dr. Virginia, it was great to have a conversation with you today. Yes, absolutely. As always. As always. And we will talk to you all soon. Bye-bye.